two scenes were in the running to serve as the cold open for Ocean 13. The first was the scene where Brad Pitt gets a mysterious call and leaves in the middle of a heist. Gotta go. The other scene considered was the conversation between Ruben and Willie Bank, where Ruben gets ousted from his partnership and ends up in the hospital. Me and Willie Bank been around long enough that we both shook Sinatra's hand. Brad Pitt's scene was given the honor of starting the film because in the end, director Steven Soderbergh thought it was the more interesting choice. Unlike Ocean's 12 that added new characters to the roster, 13 tried to simplify things by taking characters away. Hey, where are Tess and Isabel? It's not their fight. Whoa. Before coming to this decision, there were actually scenes written with Tess and Isabel in them. But eventually the decision was made to take them out of the story, to not pull the focus away from the original 11 whose loyalty to each other was the central theme of the story. Ocean 13 calls back to the first film in the trilogy by returning to Vegas where we first met our band of anti-heroes. Although unlike Ocean's 11 that was centered on real Vegas casinos, 13's Asian-themed cash cow wasn't real, so all of its splendor was built in a soundstage. However, this doesn't mean it was completely fake by any means. It was actually fully operational, and everything in it was built to suit Vegas casino standards, right down to the most minute details. In addition to bringing back the setting to Vegas, Steven Soderbergh also wanted to bring back the gang's use of roleplay that was nearly absent from Ocean's 12. Hello, Kensington Chubb here. The role-playing in 13, though, introduced us to some hilariously ridiculous disguises, such as George Clooney's Freddie Mercury-inspired outfit, and another was Brad Pitt's seismologist character, whose appearance was designed after guitarist Jeff Skunk Baxter. We're gonna have to let you go. Turn in your uniform. I only gained four pounds, you can't. Speaking of role playing, a short fun fact about Ellen Barkin is that she was going to have a role in Ocean's 12, but her character ended up getting cut from the story. So they were happy to bring her back to play Banks' right hand lady Abigail Sponder in Ocean's 13. Hollywood movies often have the main characters overcome insurmountable odds in ways that bend the fabric of reality. Even still, that doesn't mean the ways our heroes overcome those odds are completely impossible in real life. For example, the filmmakers of Ocean's 13 found out that if Danny and his crew were going to rig the casino dice, they'd have to do it from the factories in Mexico, where most casino dice in Vegas are made. Because beyond those factories, the dice would be under heavy security at all times. On the subject of security, when the plot point was written in that the Greco system was designed by an old classmate of Roman Nagel's, they were very lucky to be able to conveniently film the scene of Linus doing recon work on the Greco in London because Matt Damon was already over there filming the third Bourne movie. I've blown all my buy money, my bribe money, four of my best IDs, and I am nowhere. Just like the scenes of Isabel in Ocean's 12, Steven Soderbergh shot the scenes of FBI agent Caldwell with a handheld camera to create an uneasy and threatening presence his character brings to the story. If you see anything that looks unusual, you contact us. You bet. The reaction shots of Andy Garcia sitting in his office while watching surveillance footage of the heist were all shot without knowing where or how these reaction shots would be used. Steven Soderbergh just had Garcia sit down and act out a variety of emotions so that they would have footage to use to keep Benedict involved in the story. So now you can appreciate Garcia's reactions and how they were edited even more because at the time of filming, he didn't even know what he was reacting to. <laughs> yes. In the movie's audio commentary, Steven Soderbergh explains a plot point that wasn't clearly explained in the movie. When Frank tells Benedict they can't drill through 18 inches of concrete, this was meant to be a misdirect. Man, we can't drill through that. All along, they knew Benedict would try to steal the diamonds from them, so they had to lie to him about not being able to move the diamonds glass case, so they'd have an ace in the hole when Benedict sent to Laura to confront them on the rooftop at the end of the heist. Making movies is a very expensive process, and the filmmakers often try to reuse or borrow whatever they can to make productions run more smoothly. For example, for all three Oceans movies, they used the real CEO office at the Bellagio as a location for Terry Benedict's office. A bonus fun fact is that the actress that plays Benedict's personal secretary was used in Oceans 12 during Benedict's phone call with Delore, and again in Oceans 13 near the end of the film, because she was the real life receptionist of the real CEO of the Bellagio and MGM Grand. Well, I was just very moved by, by what they're, the kind of work they're doing there. To film the Oprah interview with Terry Benedict, Oprah used her own production studio to film the segment. 
After finishing filming one of her own episodes, she had Andy Garcia come on stage in character for a few minutes to do the interview, in front of her live studio audience who was told beforehand about the whole thing to be in on the act. Thank you, Terry Benedict. We'll be right back. Nowadays, filming in airports is very difficult because of tighter security measures after 9-11. However, the filmmakers did extra planning to have every detail mapped out so they could tell airport security everything they would do and what equipment they would use. Their planning paid off because they were able to film in a very small section of an airport to get the shots they needed to finish the last scene of the film. If there's a movie you'd like to learn about next, please leave a comment below. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to learn more fun facts about your favorite films. I won $11 million!